doing, I believe, the second video in my little hypage series that I do every two-ish years, where I talk about books that I think are overhyped, underhyped, and then correctly hyped. Today we are covering the underhyped books. So these books are all ones that I think deserve more hype. So some of them have a lot of hype already, but I think they're so good they deserve even more. And some of them I don't think have gotten enough shine on them. So caveat here is obviously I am judging hype in the context of what I have seen in my realms of influence and the zeitgeist that I swim in. So different people are going to have different perceptions of hype, but based on what I have seen, I do not think that these have gotten enough love. Even if they have gotten a lot of love, they just have not gotten enough. So uh, maybe let's start with ones that I think are known, but deserve even more hype than they get. So first of all, I would say The Cutting Season by Attica Locke. I would recommend this to people who are looking for literary mystery thriller that is really thematically rich in terms of kind of the legacy of slavery in the American South. And yes, this, you know, Attica Locke is very known in certain circles, but I think that she deserves even more love. And this is my favorite of what I have read from her. So I definitely think this deserves even more hype than it already gets. Last Quintista by Donna Barba Iguera. Now look, I almost put this in correctly hyped because it does have a Newbery Award. Now granted, this is this is a very well received book. I'm not arguing, but it deserves more. This is one of the best middle grades I've ever read. This is a sci-fi that I think is just absolutely emotionally devastating. So just know that before you give it to some unsuspecting tween. Um, and I definitely recommend it for adult readers as well. So this uh, is about the world ending and it is following a girl whose family is chosen to escape Earth on a spaceship and what goes wrong along the way. So this is so good. It's beautifully written and absolutely devastating and deserves even more hype than the Newberry people can give it. Then I did see quite a few, I feel like everybody who's read Bad Fat Black Girl by Cecily Bowen has loved it and has raved about it, but more people should read it and more people should talk about it because I think it's an absolutely fantastic memoir. I, I think it's what I would recommend to people now as kind of an introduction to probably feminism in general, but certainly to this notion of like intersectional feminism. I would recommend this probably, mm, well, I don't know. Maybe start with hood feminism if you've like totally not been in on that conversation, but definitely make sure you get to Bad Fat Black Girl because I think this is so good, so well observed. It's really great as a memoir, but it also has a ton to say about sort of the fe like feminist philosophy. That sounds like too formal, but that's basically, like, it has a lot of great observation about what it means to be in all three of these identities, it does not get enough readership. And those who have read it know and love it. So be among the people who have read it. Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri, I feel like got a lot of hype when it was first coming out. And I think when people read it, they love it, but I never felt like it got as much hype as it deserved. It's great as a fantasy. So if you're looking for an imaginative fantasy world based on like Southwest Asian influence. I think it's great as that. It has a really great central love story. So I think the romance component is really good. It's not sold as a fantasy romance. And I, I think it's kind of on the line. I think if you're a fantasy reader that's cool with some romance, this works for you. If you're a romance reader who's down with having a more straightforward fantasy, this is good for you. But like, this is so well done, so well written, and the characters in this are fantastic. So I feel like it doesn't get enough love. Even if people, I, I don't know, I just feel like it's never gotten the hype it deserves. I read it because the people who were reading it and loving it sold the hell out of it to me and they were absolutely right about it. Do Nothing by Cecily, not Cecily, C uh, Celeste Headley. This I feel like is the nonfiction one that slept on in the realm of talking about work. So I hear a lot about laziness does not exist and work won't love you back. But I feel like Do Nothing is another one that belongs in that. Also, there's a book called How to Do Nothing. I think all three of those are better known than Do Nothing is. But this I think is, mm, yeah, probably my favorite of the four. So I think that of that genre of like, interrogating our relationship to work, at least here in America, this is the one that I would most recommend because I think it has a really good grounding in the history and then has 
suggestions or sort of like moves into more of a how-to mode once it's established that. So yeah, I think this one deserves more love than it gets. And then Like a Sister by Kelly Garrett. This one I do think is getting a lot of love or has gotten love. I mean, I should say it's a book of the month club pick. So again, I was on the border of if it belonged and correctly hyped. But I think that the places it's getting love are not on the booktube or book talk streets. Like this is a Edgar nominee, like an Edgar Award winner nominee for the for the year it was eligible. Um, it was a book of the month club pick. Yes. So like clearly getting some traction, but it deserves more because I think it's a really well written version of a kind of family suspense mystery in that realm. Um, I think the family dynamics in this are really great. And yeah, yeah, it's not my favorite in terms of the kind of plot it has. It's just not my personal favorite. But the quality of this is so high that if you like a domestic suspense more than I do, you should absolutely read this. I think it completely deserves more love than it's gotten so far. And then I'm going to say that a series is underhyped, and that is within the realm of the Elderling series. Rainwell Chronicles gets a bad rap. And if you know, you know. If you've watched this channel, you know my absolute soapbox I have about this quartet of books that I think that they are really good. Are they quality wise the best thing in the realm of the elderlings? I will concede that they are not but they are incredibly high quality as a fantasy story in general. They are so much about disability and about um, women's reproductive choices thematically think I think this is great and I think I don't know I've I've encountered people also who this was their first outing with Robin Hobb and they were like I don't understand why people talk about this like it's bad I loved it and kept reading because of it exactly I think I, this is so much better than it is repped in the realm of the elderling fandom so I am not here for Rainwell Chronicles slander and I think it is underhyped vis-a-vis -vis the realm of the elderlings. It, there is no slog in the realm of the elderlings is basically what I'm trying to get to. And I think people try to make this the slog and they are wrong. It is not the slog. Uh, and then Sister Song by Lucy Holland. This I think really is a read alike for Cersei, which has been such a huge hit. Uh, that one's by Madeline Miller. But I think people who liked Circe would really like Sister Song. And I'm not going to say that it has had no hype. I do think it's had some, but I'm just, I don't know. I feel like more people should talk about this as a read-alike for Circe. And I think that this has some really interesting things to say about sibling dynamics, uh, gender, sexuality. I don't know. This is just really, really good and deserves more love. I think. I wonder also, I think that this may have gotten more play in Britain than it has here in the US because it is based on kind of like British, like a British folk song. So maybe that's part of it. But yeah, I think here in the US more people should be reading this because I think it's really high quality, has a lot of the same vibes to me as Cersei did. Okay, and then the last one in the this has gotten some hype, but I think it deserves even more camp is The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy by Megan Bannon. I have not seen this as hyped as The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches or Half a Soul. And I think that this is absolutely as good dare I say better. I would say of those three, this is probably my favorite. And I think of all three of those as fantasy romances that don't read like traditional genre romance as straightforwardly. And therefore, I think are getting billed as cozy fantasy when I would argue they're actually fantasy romance. But either which way, it absolutely has those cozy vibes. It has, you know, the romantic element. This is a retelling, not a direct one to one, but this is very heavily inspired by You've Got Mail slash The Shop Around the Corner, that story, um, but with zombies. So I think that this deserves more love and definitely deserves to be as recommended as those other two I was talking about. I think that this is even better than those. Okay, and then we're going to talk about ones that I just don't, I haven't really seen hyped or I haven't seen hyped in a long time, at least in my spheres of the bookish internet. So I put Krampus and the Crone by Honey Phillips and then I would also put Artek by Honey Phillips. I just think Honey Phillips in general does not get enough love for sci-fi romance on Kindle Unlimited. If you're not reading Honey Phillips and you like that kind of romance where it has that sort of sweetness or wholesomeness to the romance, but also smut and also kind of a camp imaginativeness with the alienness of the, the dudes in these relationships. I think that you're missing out if you're not reading Honey Phillips. Like you absolutely should be reading her. 
more. This one is a holiday one, so it's a take on the Krampus, but he's an alien. And it was so camp and fun. And then Artek, I really love that seven uh, brides for seven alien brothers, whatever it was called. That whole series I thought was great and is very underhyped. That is my plug for it at least. Say it with me again, Never Coming Home by Kate Williams. I know I talked about this so much last year, but I just, this did not get any promotion it felt like. I think pretty much everyone who read this on my recommendation told me, came back and told me that they loved it. So I'm not gonna say it's a perfect hit, but I do think that if you like the idea of a very aged up YA slash probably more like a new adult or like an adult thriller take on And Then There Were None, this is billed as Fire Festival meets And Then There Were None, so it's like a lot of social media influencers, things like that. If that appeals to you and you're into the idea of it not being a one-to-one -one retelling of And Then There Were None, but heavily, heavily influenced by that, you should be, this is so good. I thought that this was absolutely fantastic and did not get nearly enough promo or love when it came out last year. Dress Codes by Richard Thomas Ford, I just think is a really, really good version of what it is. It's a history that is specifically talking about how clothing, textiles, fashion influenced the law in Western history. Like this is a really interesting take on a few different subject matters. It's really well done. It's just a very well executed history. And I think I got some love in terms of like, again, sort of like newspaper coverage at the time, but I don't think that it really translated into kind of like social media bookish discourse. And I would highly recommend this. I think that this was really, really good. Very underhyped romance, in my opinion, was The Love Con by Cerisia Glass. This is totally a, t a comp title to Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade, except this is about uh, like kind of the nerdy culture in question is cosplay and cons. And it's a friends to lovers, fake dating, reality show delight. And this did not get enough love when it came out. And people should go back and read it because I think it is absolutely great. And not enough people talked about it. Ooh, I'm losing my earring. Okay, and then the last ones that I wanted to talk about are mysteries. And so the one I don't have in physical form is Dead Dead Girls by, ooh, I forget the author's first name. Her last name is Afia. This is the start of a historical mystery series. I think that it's really great. It's set in Harlem in the 1920s. It is by and featuring black characters, which I think in a historical mystery can be a little harder to come by. So I think that that's really great. And I thought that it was just a really good serial killer thriller kind of book. It has queer rep if I'm remembering rightly. Yeah, just all around. I felt like that book did not go as far as I thought it was going to because I thought for a debut, it was really well done. <clears throat> I'm a little harder sell on a historical mystery in general. So it didn't fully hook me in, but I felt like it deserved a lot more love than it got when it first came out. And I would definitely recommend, I, I know there was at least one other book that came out. Um, I would definitely recommend checking it out. I thought that it was very well done and great to see such high quality in a debut. Um, okay, and then a few more, like I said, these are all mystery thriller-ish. Never Saw Me Coming by Vera Curlon, I feel like was hyped in the moment, but has totally fallen off. And if you're just looking for fun, a fun serial killer mystery, very voice driven. So maybe that didn't work for everyone. I don't know. And you're looking for something that's just entertaining, which for me, that's like the number one thing a mystery th thriller needs to do. I gotta be having fun. And I just think that this was very playful and entertaining. I'm surprised it wasn't a bigger hit because of how entertaining I thought it was at least. Again, maybe the because it is so voice driven, maybe the voice just didn't work for everyone. I don't know. But I thought that it was just really fantastic. So I'm surprised this did not get more traction when it came out and I would definitely recommend it. The Fixer by Jennifer Lynn Barnes in contrast to The Inheritance Game, which has really taken off. This is one of, I'm not sure if this is her first book, but it's definitely one of her earlier books. I think that this is such a good political YA thriller and it's just really well done. It's I think underhyped in the sense of it's a part of her backlist that I don't think people think of her for and it's I think really worthy of a lot more attention. And I'm hoping now that the Inheritance Game trilogy was such a big hit that potentially people will go back and read this because yeah, like I said, for it, it's kind of the idea of scandal. So like a political fixer, 
but in the context of a YA story. And there's, you know, political assassinations and she's caught up in it. It's just really, really good. So hopefully people will go back and read that. Uh, and then I thought I would mention this because I think here in the US at least, this is very underhyped. I think maybe this got more play in Britain, but The Twyford Code by Janice Hallett. If you're looking for just a really, it, it's multimedia, and I do think that there's an accent thing that is translated into the text that is a little challenging for people who are not native with that accent, the uh, like a British accent. So if you can get your hands, for example, on a audio version of this, that might work better for you as a US reader. But I think where this book ends up going and like the solution to this is really fun. And I think if you're a lover of a mystery and you're okay with it, maybe not being totally fair play. I think that the twist in this is really enjoyable and it's one of those twists that's very transformative to the story as a whole. So I think that, I don't know, I'm just, I, I am surprised that more mystery lovers in the US haven't cottoned on to this because I think it's really fun. And Janice Hallett in general, I'm surprised doesn't get a little more love from mystery lovers in the US. Like at least I don't see her books all that wide, like they're not as widely distributed here. Like I don't think she has a US publisher for at least two of her three books. So anyway, I'm just, I feel like this is underhyped for tr people who really like a mystery here in the US. With that, I think those were all of my underhyped books. Uh, like I said, it's always relative to the amount of hype that I personally see for a book, caveat there. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you have seen more hype for some of these books, or if you agree that they're underhyped, or if you agree that yes, they are very hyped, but they are not hyped enough. Let me know that uh, in the comments. And yeah, I think that will do it for this video. So if you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye! Thank you.